All right, Rob. Uh, Drew Brees is back. And um, this was going to be a good game anyway. I mean, I love watching Kansas City, whoever they play. But they're playing the Saints, and the Saints have one of the best defenses in the NFL. Last night's lo- last week's loss to Philadelphia notwithstanding. And uh, it won't be Taysom Hill, though. As I said, it'll be Drew Brees. So what was going to be a good, exciting game anyway has now become perhaps the best game of the weekend. And um, what are your thoughts on Breeze coming back? There are some that think, you know, remember he had 11 fractured ribs and a punctured lung. He's missed four games. Do you think they're bringing him back too soon? I don't know. It just seemed like I think that they – they're forced to now because they lost that game uh, to the Eagles. And it ain't just about losing. The Eagles weren't that good of a team. And you had a rookie quarterback starting, Chris. And I think that's a big loss. And they also gave up the number one seed in the NFC. So I don't know if they really can afford to lose another game. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I, I'm assuming that he's all right and healthy because I have to think that, that they wouldn't put him in harm's way. Which is At what they're age? saying, of course. Huh? Yeah, that they're, what they're saying is that, you know, he's healthy, he practiced yeah, all yeah. week. I, I they have wouldn't to put him out there if he wasn't. Because Which he I, ain't a kid. I would tend to agree, too. No, right. Because you if know? you put him out there and he's not healthy right. at his age, Chris, and the broken ribs or what damage that could be done to him. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, like you would regret that. I, 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 that, would be, that would be heinous to do something like that Absolutely. just over a football game. But I do think – that they, they they feel like they got to win, like they need a win, and the best chance of winning is by having Drew Brees back, and I think that's why he's playing. I, I, I don't know if they were playing uh, a bad team, Chris, and not the Chiefs. I don't know if he would play. They might have they held him out another week. I, I disagree. I think he would be playing regardless of who it is because they could play a great game and lose to Kansas City. So I don't think they're playing him just because we got to win this game. I actually think if they were playing a bad team, they might be even more prone to bring him back, you know, him being healthy and all, uh, because you don't want to lose to a a team that you know you're better than, just like they did last week. I and, hear you. I yeah, hear you. But I mean, I, 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 I just but I think, think you're I acting think, like they don't think that they can beat the Chiefs. I think they I mean, think I, they can, but okay, I think they can beat right. – I think they – Going to every game, like if they didn't have they Drew Brees, in a row before if they, they didn't have Drew Brees, I think they'd go in with Taysom Hill, thinking say say they're playing Washington, we can beat Washington with Taysom Hill, you know. So I I, I just think that I I don't I think this is more about Drew is healthy, and we've only got three games left, so we need to get Drew. He's missed four games. This is last year. If, if all signs are go and he, he seems healthy, then we need to get him reacclimated to the offense because we want him clicking on all cylinders once he's back and once, once the playoffs start. And it's probably going to be a little rust. It, it might be a, some soreness. And so I think they want him to play through that and work, out, work through the rust and get in sync with his receivers again, even though Michael Thomas won't be playing with an ankle injury. Uh, and and be ready to go once they hit the playoffs. Because right now they could win the rest of their games and still not get the bye week. Because that Green Bay has right, if them. Green Bay doesn't lose. Right, they have if the they, number one seed right now. If they yeah. have the same, if they have the same record, Green Bay is number one because of right. the them beating them in the head to head game back in New Orleans. What was that week three or something, Chris? That was early on in the season. Yeah, I mean um, uh, New Orleans is was one and two to start the season. Right. And then so, they won yeah, nine in a row. In the third week, yeah. Right. Yeah, so so I don't know. I just I think that they're hoping that they can win, um, that they can win the game, and the better chance of winning is, is getting Drew Brees. I get it. You want to get him back in action sooner than later. You don't want to wait till the playoffs for his first game, so I do get that. But I, I really believe that they just feel like uh, this. who gives us our best chance of, of beating the Chiefs, and it's not – uh, Taysom Hill. It's just not. It's going to be Drew Brees, even though they're now without their best receiver, which he's had such a awful uh, 
follow-up to an unbelievable yeah. year as receiver, Chris. You want to talk he, about – He really has. Just – I mean, he was unstoppable a year ago, and this year, like nothing. I, it's well, shocking. early in the and year, still there good. was talk of his attitude, and now it's just been more injuries. You know, it's right. just one of those years where he's been banged up. And um, you're right, it's unfortunate, especially being Breeze's last year, but you hope for them that he can get back and, you know, be ready to go – for the playoffs, which all signs kind of point to that. But are you – there's some line of thinking out there that the Saints made the made a mistake by going with Taysom Hill uh, because they ended up losing the game. And as you said, that cost them, at least right now, the number one seed. Is that your thinking that they made a mistake by going with him? Well, my only thing was that we wouldn't know – until uh, after we see what what you know what the shakedown was, Chris. After those games, and it's not strictly that Taysom Hill was bad or anything. It's just that he was by far the least experienced quarterback in that situation than Jameis Winston. And I don't know their defense was playing so well that maybe they would have won, but ultimately that loss, fair or unfair, because he played 3-1, and one, you would say, oh, that was pretty good, right? But that one loss was against a bad team and a game you really needed to keep pace with Green Bay, so it hurts even more. I don't know what Jameis Winston would have done, but ultimately, if they don't get to the Super Bowl because they have to, they're a wild card, I mean, they, because they don't have uh, – uh, the buy or home whatever it event, is, Chris. Home field advantage. Home field advantage is what I Because it's a right. big thing. Look, it is home field NFL. advantage is every game is in the Superdome. Right. It versus having difference. to go to Lambeau. Right. It'd be one thing if they go, go to Tampa. Well, they won't. But, you know, if they had to go to Tampa or go to even L.A. But Lambeau? Right. No, it's, when you're it's used a, to playing in a dome? It's a big difference. And now difference. you're going, right, going up there, and, and it could be below zero. It could be snow. There's no telling what could be going on And they on have an advantage because they're used to it. Uh, you know what I mean? Just the elements. Yeah, the and, Packers. And, right. That's what they play in. They're, they're not expecting 68 degrees and comfortable, right? You know what I mean? Indoors. Absolutely. Right. So, so, yeah. So, I'm just saying, I mean, you can look at it. I'm, if they don't get to where a lot of people thought, I picked them to go to the Super Bowl, and they lose a road game, Chris, uh, you know, along the way, then maybe it, we'll look back and go, that game did wind up costing them, and uh, maybe they didn't make the right decision. But there's no clear-cut answer. Yeah, there, there's. I think there's a clear-cut answer, and I think it's that they didn't make a mistake. I mean, Taysom Hill was fine. Now, he, wasn't, he didn't like the league on fire. He made his mistakes. He fumbled seven times. You know, he only lost Chris, three of them. But, he, but he, yeah, huge. he fumbled seven times. So he wasn't spectacular, but he was okay. They went three and one, to your point. And in the NFL, sometimes you lose to a worse team. I mean, it happens quite a bit. They lost to the Raiders early in the season with Drew Brees. And the Raiders certainly aren't any good. Sorry, Rob G. But they aren't. So you're and saying that when the Chiefs lost to the think Raiders? Think about that. The Raiders beat the Chiefs and the Saints. No, my point is, sometimes in the NFL, you lose to teams that are worse than you. This is world-class football. Everybody is very good. And if you don't have it one day and for whatever reason, anybody can beat you. And so I don't hold that loss against Taysom Hill. Um, you know, Philadelphia was had a spirited performance. Jalen Hurts obviously gave him a lift. But uh, they did they potentially take them lightly? I mean, I look at the defense. I know Taysom Hill wasn't great, but the defense gave up a lot of points to a rookie quarterback. Yeah, but they they if you look at they they shut them down after the, the second half, so, but the they second got half, they, they didn't show they, up in the first half. They made an adjustment after they figured out this guy and uh and and they just didn't get enough offensive power. You know what I mean? They did they didn't because the defense showed up in the second half with a chance to win that game. They had trimmed the, the game, Chris, if I remember correctly, to 17-14. Am I right? Now, the defense was better in the second half. It was right. really good. But they my point is they shouldn't right. have been that bad in the first half yeah, but against a rookie quarterback on a bad team. Yeah, I get it. You know? And, but, I but mean, sometimes his without first, seeing first somebody, start, you know? I, I mean, I'm just, I'm not, I, I get those factors. But, you know, you're talking about arguably the best defense in the league. They probably took them lightly. Sometimes it can be human nature where this kid's a rookie. Because you remember. The team isn't any good anyway. 
yeah, we, dur- we should during roll that, over them. During that 9-0 and run of nine in a row, you remember the defense was carrying the team. I mean, they were playing great. They were, at one point, I remember they were giving up eight or nine points a game. It was right. ridiculous. That's how good it was. But well, those their three the three games without uh, the first three games without Breeze is when they did it. They gave up nine. Granted, they played the Falcons twice, right? But in the Broncos, so it wasn't the greatest competition. But, but they, they did go them. three and one. Yeah, they did go three and one, and uh, Hill was fine. There's no we we don't know if Jameis Winston would have been as good or better or worse or you know whatever. But um, it's gonna be interesting. To see Breeze back. I'm a little surprised. I, I will look. I don't think they bring him back if he wasn't fully healthy. But man, there's a part of me that's afraid for him. But they play again in six days. I believe they got Minnesota. And, um, you know, he's got to come back at some time. I, w- I would think you'd give him the extra rest. But if he's, I know he's chomping at the bit and he wants to get back out there. And we know he's a perfectionist. And he's probably saying, I need the reps. I want to be ready come playoff time. I want to be at the top of my game. This is my last year, most likely, right? So he wants to, you know, play every moment he can. On the table, uh, right? right? Which he was able to save, Chris, after the whole Black Lives Matter. You remember, he was teetering Drew Brees. You remember that? I mean. Yeah, when he made his comment about the flag. Exactly, and somehow he was able to right the ship, and so I guess that's still on the table, at least uh, to to take over as uh, to take over for uh, Chris Collinsworth. Yeah, you can already see what the new team is going to be. It's going to be Drew Brees and Mike Tirico. Right, right. Well, when Tirico went there, he knew eventually, you know. Yeah, he was going to get he that. He was getting that. Right, right. So do you think? Uh, The Saints are bringing Drew Brees back too early. Is this a mistake? All right, let's kick it off with Dre in uh, Michigan. You're on the Odd Couple, Fox Sports Radio. What's up, Dre? Hey, what it do, fellas? Y'all right? Oh, yeah. What it do, bro? Good, good. What it is? Before I do my point, I got a bone to pick with you, Chris. You and that dog had me looking real stupid last week, pulling over and slowing down because I kept hearing a faint police siren. But turn out it was your dog back there whining. Man, that was one segment. That yeah, was like that dog was seven crazy, minutes. man. That was but like I was, seven dri- I was driving because I got to listen to y'all on podcasts because I'm usually not home when it's like me riding when it's live. So right. I'm riding in the middle of the night slowing down because there's the dog in the background. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, and you know what? We needed a muzzle for that dog that Chris hey, had. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> But, yeah, I think they are rushing them back early, but I understand why they're doing it because they're trying to fight for home field advantage. This being this last year, they need every advantage they can have. But, like, I think you had uh, Greg Jennings on yesterday. You're not fully recovered from that in, sh- in that short amount of time. And even, like, Merriman said, they just don't so. shoot him up. You say what? Well, I yeah. wouldn't think so. I, it, but it I wouldn't seems... think, to be honest, I, I don't know if he'd be ready next week. You know, like, he's not going to be fully healed. That's going to be an issue. Right? No, it is going to be an issue. Yeah. When you're talking about 11 ribs, I right. mean, 11. And a punctured lung. How many do we have? I don't even know how many we have. <laughs> I know. I, that's about all of them. Maybe, what, maybe we got 12. I don't know. That's right. about all of them, though. Is all that right, a full slab or half a slab? I'm trying to figure it out. A slab is 12, <laughs> I think, right? So, so it's but that's and those side. are animals. And those are cows, right? So I don't know if that's us. Rob G, see if you can find out how many ribs we have. We gave one to women, Eve. Yeah, you know. know. So check All that right. out, Rob G. Here we go. John in Ohio. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What's up, John? We got hey, 24 ribs, Rob. We got 24. Just okay, 24 ribs. Okay, so we only broke, that's that's he only broke 11. That's a lot of He only broke 11. What all right, is, all it's right. all right. He can bounce back. John, you got all 24 of your ribs? <laughs> yeah, I got them all. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Okay, anyway, um, I feel like, yeah, they're rushing back Breeze. And like the other caller said, I understand why. I mean, you don't you don't want to be in Green Bay. I uh, said so not not in January, February time frame. I uh, said so you don't know what the weather's going to be like. And, you know, the Saints is a lot of a short passing game. I uh, said so yep. they got a great run game, which, you know, Green Bay's defense isn't a good run defense. But they could be out there looking like Lamar Jackson did with Cleveland. If it's snow out there, it neutralizes speed, and it definitely neutralizes your feet and stability to try to run, cut, and all that, right. so it gives Green Bay a great advantage. So no I, doubt. I, mean, I don't know. I would just wouldn't want to take the risk of him getting hurt. You know, Breeze, I'd rather just have him sit out another week or two. Because the next couple games with Cake, 
They should beat the Panthers and Vikings. But I mean, I just that's just my opinion. Well, given yeah, look, you given, given the that, choice, you given made the that choice, choice right. of having Breeze fully healthy and not home field advantage, or a bit sore and banged up, but having full home court advantage, home field, I'd rather him just be healthy. Yeah, but home field is big. Like like Brady's never been to the Super Bowl when they haven't had the. Um, how did I know you were going to bring up? No, but but a I'm just saying stat about Tom. Brady. No, but but it's just true though. Where's the it, hater alert? It does. It the, does aren't we make, supposed to get that the horn does, or something? Why oh is that? man, you hey, are hey, right hey, though. You are right. You are. That's right. all I'm saying. Am I yeah. right? He's never made yes. it without having that. Uh, right. The, the, so thank so God make, they had it six times. So right? it makes a difference. All right, Ty. <laughs> In Palm Springs, you're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What's up, Ty? What's going on, guys? What you, up? Uh, I'm gonna try to make my points real quick. Um, I said on Trash Talking Tuesday, we got to get Taysom out of there. So Drew Brees coming back for me uh, is a go for sure. I think if you are gonna bring him back, um, the Chiefs their pass rush is ranked I think 22nd by Pro Football Focus. So if you're talking about and anything can happen on any given Sunday. Sure. But if you're talking about his the odds of him getting seriously banged up or hit a bunch of times, KC's defense isn't the defense that that's going to happen from. And you might be thinking about maybe giving him a look at Kansas City, thinking forward to is this a potential Super Bowl matchup? And, again, that's a good trying point. to get that home field advantage. That's right. a good point. No, no, no doubt about it. Yeah, that's a good point. But, uh, yeah. I, it That makes sense. All right. Friend of the show, former All-Pro linebacker, host of the Lights Out podcast. We welcome to the Odd Couple, Sean Merriman. What's up, brother? What's up, Sean? What's up, fellas? How you doing? We doing are great, great, man. Great to have you. Happy holidays to you and your family. And uh, let's before we get into the sports, now you are trying to get Congress uh, working. You're working with this initiative to help local gyms that are close to being closed. Uh, it's called Jim Co- jimscoalition.org. Can you kind of tell us about that? Yeah. Uh, you know, there's something I've been uh, very passionate about, man. As you guys know, I'm, I'm still a meathead, right? I still work out uh, as much as possible. And there's a lot of other people out there, too. Um, and I know we're talking about the restaurants being shut down and some essential businesses, but to me, in my opinion, and how I always felt about a gym, is the gyms are uh, essential. Uh, not just to, to look good, but to feel good, man. I mean, look, look at the, uh, you know, the mental health uh, and the depression, anxiety that's raised over these last ten months. And you telling me that the the gyms uh, aren't essential enough to have people working in there. And there's going to be thousands of gyms here, man, closing in the next sixty days or so. Um, and forty seven percent of them already closed down and not going to open up permanently. So um, it's just a shame that Congress. Uh, isn't doing more to help these local gyms out, man. I'm really trying to get it out there so uh, people sign, um, you know, sign this petition and get Congress moving on it. Yeah, it's it's like that spare tire that Chris has. You know what I mean? Like we need these gyms back open. <laughs> you mean so that, that six pack? What? <laughs> you know, eight pack? That keg you carried around? <laughs> hey, 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 Sean, we need we need to definitely talk about and um, on on a lighter note, uh, the fight. Where Nate Robinson got uh, smashed there? What were you surprised by that? Not surprised? What did you make of that whole thing? Uh, Chris and I always talk about a lot of guys think they're tough, but that doesn't mean you can box or get in the ring with somebody who's skilled, right? No, and you know what? I came on on the show with you guys, and I said he was going to get knocked out sometime in the early second <laughs> when we talked last time, <laughs> and right. it happened early second. And the reason why I said this, right, because Nate Robinson is still an athlete. So you always have an athlete's chance to be successful, just be decent or something. So I, I knew he was going to get out of the first round. Uh, but I watched Jake, Jake Paul train for a year, and I see this guy, I see the dude sparring uh, other professional fighters and going toe to toe and actually looking pretty good. So I, I, I knew that it was going to end very bad for Nate Robinson, whether it was in the second round, third round. Just I knew something was going to happen, and I tell these guys all the time, and, and I and I kind of transitioned into combat sports over 13, 12, 13 years ago, you, you can play football, you can run some routes, you can play back, a pickup game of basketball, you can go play soccer and have fun, but you can't play fighting. And I try to tell these guys that unless you, you're sparring, you have the repetition, going in there, um, 
you're not going to have any success. And, and look what happened. I mean, he he, he was the meme of this decade. Probably. I mean, it was right. it, it was everywhere. And I feel and, and, bad for him. I feel bad for him, but not that much because you can't go in there just thinking because you're an athlete, you're going to have some success. But, Sean, when you get knocked out, put to sleep like that, when I mean, that's going to be what he's remembered for. Not that he was an NBA uh, dunk champion, slam dunk champion, or you know what I mean? Like, like people will never forget that. That video will last forever, won't it? A hundred percent. And and the unfortunate part is about it is that it's the fight game, right? Even some of the best who's ever done it, Muhammad Ali's been knocked down before. You know, it just it, it's bound to happen at some point in time. But if you get in there and you don't have a good showing, then it's really going to look bad. Um, and, you know, I'm in the process right now in, in transitioning six former uh, um, uh, athletes from other sports, four NFL players, two track stars, a rugby star, and two big YouTubers into MMA. Uh, we, we Actually, I started shooting a show on it in, a, in about a month and a half. Um, and so it's gonna, that's going to be kind of like the contender, that type of thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be showing – it's going to be showing um, – you know, the transition and what it takes to go into MMA and the combat sports and show that you can't just walk off the street and think that you're an athlete and have some, some, uh, some success. But, guys, listen, there's, there's real guys, and, and I hate that this happened, right, because there's real former athletes out there who can go, who can scrap. I've seen them in the gym. I've either sparred against them or I've watched them work, and I just hope that the general public don't get this whole, um, you know, mindset about former athletes transitioning into a former sport. But that's interesting because I think now I think you're right. I think people are looking at Nate Robinson as representative of let's just say football and basketball players. Like man, none of them could step in there and look good. Well, who uh, else? Like Le'Veon Johnny, Bell Johnny is Morton, was Johnny talk, Morton was got Johnny knocked Morton. out too. Yeah, you remember Johnny yeah. Morton? Yeah, but you know what though? We we always we always remember the ones that get knocked out, right? I mean, so even when, even <laughs> right. back when we I had. Do. We, we even back when they were, when I was talking about fighting some years ago, the first thing people say to me, "Oh, what about Johnny Moore?" I'm not Johnny Moore. You know, <laughs> that's just, but that's what we remember. We we forget that Herschel Walker at forty something years old came and won a couple right. fights at forty. Right. At 40 Somebody years need old. to knock him Kendall out. Kendall Gill, though. Kendall sorry. Gill. I don't know if you remember Kendall Gill, the basketball yeah, player. Yeah, Kendall Gill. He was okay. Uh, yeah. re- re- guys, remember uh, Michael Westbrook that played wide receiver for the Redskins? He was a he was a damn good fighter. So we. We always we always remember the ones getting knocked out, and it's even worse now because they're social media. Like that right. knockout for Nate right. Robinson, he's not going to be able to go to the club in a year or two. <laughs> he's not going to be able to go nowhere because that thing is going to be looming over his head for a long time. Now there, and you, I don't do you do you? I know you do kind of everything MMA, boxing. I mean, you even looking at bare knuckle fighting. Like, I want to add throw this out at you because you know these celebrity. Fights. I mean, now Floyd Mayweather's going to fight Logan Paul, which obviously is kind of a Money joke. Grab. Money and, grab. And Jake Paul's challenging everybody and their mother to a fight. It seems like celebrity fights where the guys aren't really experienced or necessarily great fighters, you know, but, but they're known. People want to see that. Does that interest you at all? Like maybe a celebrity, like if you fought a, another former football player or – you know, would you be interested in anything like that? If it's just because of your celebrity, people would probably want to see you fight. Yeah, and I've been saying it for a while. I mean, you know, I've, I've talked about fighting other WWE guys. I've been talking about fighting other football uh, former athletes, and I've always. Would you want to box, that. box or MMA? No, it, it'll be MMA. It'll be MMA okay. because boxing, boxing for me, I'm, I'm past the stage of going to going to do a box. I've been training MMA, you know, practically for you know over ten years. Uh, but I, I do think I do think it's going to be a thing, and, I, and I've said this for the past couple of years, right? There's nothing wrong, with it, and it's going to be frowned upon by real boxers and the right. real boxing fans. It's going to be frowned upon. Like, the fact that Floyd Mayweather is fighting Logan Paul, people can't stand it. And, and, I, and I get it, but times has changed, you know? So if you put Floyd Mayweather against Logan Paul, but you fill that card up with other up-and-coming boxers, now not only – is in a great fight with that one, but now you're putting these other boxes on the map. So it's all about the promotion side of it. Uh, me personally, I've always been down with fighting another athlete or another WWE guy or another actor or somebody. Another, I'm always down with that. I've been saying that for years if it comes about. Uh, but until then, man, I'm just going to keep promoting Lights Out Extreme Fighting and, and, and growing that. 
All right. You know, I got man. one last question before you go. And, and, you know, be honest. I know you're an honest guy. Drew Brees is coming back uh, this Sunday. And um, I've seen some players on TV say this. Like, look, it's football, baby. And you know his ribs. You know, we know the situation. 11 fractured ribs. Are dudes going to be going for his ribs? Well, okay, so I <laughs> so I, I played with Drew, right, in 2005 uh, with, when he was with the Chargers, and I was about 40 feet away when he dislocated his shoulder. I mean, it was one of the nastiest injuries. Oh. I mean, it's literally, it hurt like a – it sounded like a tree branch that would mm. just snap. And it was gruesome, and he was walking over, and, I, and me personally and a lot of other people thought that he would never play again. So, personally, I, I think that Drew's going to be fine. I think that they're probably going to hit him up with some cortisone or lidocaine or something that just makes sure the pain is not there once you're tore it off, make sure the pain is not there. But you have to think, as a defensive player, uh, yeah, I might land on him and lay on him a little bit longer. You know, it, <laughs> like right. that, that's definitely going to cross your mind. But more importantly, going into this game, the game plan is this. Get the ball out of Drew Brees' hands. So, if I'm a defensive player, a pass rusher, a D-tackle, I'm stopping at the line of scrimmage and getting my hands up because I know that there's going to be slants and out routes and quick patterns. They don't want to get Drew hit. And and shouldn't they be called at this point uh, barbecue ribs since they have blood on them? Or no, I'm just kidding. No, I, I call them the McRib McDonald's. The McRib is back. Uh, the McRib is back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll never eat ribs with no bones. That's why I don't eat the McRib. What kind of ribs have no bones in them? The ones Drew Brees got it. They keep laying on them. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's our man, Sean Marion, man. Sean. We Merry always Christmas. love having you lights out. Host yes, of the lights you, out podcast, too. Check it out. And good luck with your initiatives, too, man, with the gym. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. All right. All, All right. right. Happy holidays. That's Sean Merriman.